Cooler Master's MK730 gaming mechanical keyboard is the more portable version of their flagship Master Key 750 and features the same premium brushed aluminum finished and floating key design as well as genuine Cherry MX switches in blue, brown, or red. Use the function keys for on-the-fly RGB LED control, admire the stylish bottom and side light bars, and feel the comfort of the removable wrist rest in a 10 keyless form factor that you can easily take on the go. It's got USB Type-C too, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. This is my monthly build for August 2019. I have a mini ITX system here that is very powerful. Got the eight core Ryzen 3000 series 3700X for the CPU. For the graphics card, I actually parted this build out with a 2070 Super, which costs about 500 bucks, and I'd recommend the Founders Edition for that. Today, I'm actually gonna be building with a 2080 Super. So that brings the total price of this build up to around $1,750, although if you go with the 2070 for 500 bucks, it'd be about 1550. Beyond that, we're gonna be building in this brand new case from Lee Ann Lee, the TU-150, which I was excited about when I first saw it back at CES because it's a mini ITX case and it has a handle on top. All the parts I'm using today are linked down in the video's description. I'm gonna go over them individually, but before that, I need to point out a couple things, some changes that will be coming when I do the follow-up video testing this system, which will be uh, later this month. The motherboard, for instance, that I'm using is the B450i or Aorus Pro Wi-Fi, which has a nice silver aesthetic on the outside, and I think it's gonna match great with the silver version of the TU-150. However, there is an Asus motherboard coming out really soon, the Crosshair 8 Impact, which is a mini DTX motherboard. This case actually supports mini DTX. It's like a slightly taller version of ITX. So in order to match that in there and also make use of the front panel USB type C port on the case, I will be swapping that motherboard in when it arrives, but it's not here yet. So for now we're building with this motherboard. And then of course there's the graphics card. You can of course get the 2070 Super for about 500 bucks. Great bang for the buck at that price point if you're spending 500 bucks on a graphics card. Founders Edition will work just fine in this case. I've got the 2080 Super Founders Edition that I will be using if this card doesn't work, which is a Zotac uh, Amp Edition of the 2080 Super, and I just wanted to throw something in there that was maybe a little bit nicer looking. But I'm not totally positive yet if this card will fit in this case, because it is a, a bit larger than the Founders Edition. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. If uh, this doesn't fit, then I'll go with the Founders Edition. Beyond that though, let's go over the rest of the parts. So for starters, here we have the Ryzen 7 3700X, which is the eight core version of the third gen Ryzen processor. There's a 3800X as well that's available. I'm just gonna be using the Wraith Prism that ships with this processor uh, to get us off the ground and up and running. Although uh, when I do the final version of this build, I think there's a decent chance that I'll be swapping in 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler because if this case is gonna be taken on the go, an AIO would actually be a better solution than an air cooler, especially a tower air cooler, and hopefully maybe also cool a little bit better than the Wraith Prism that it ships with. We're gonna take a closer look at the T150 in just a minute, but it's mini ITX, it's got a handle on the top, it uses an SFX power supply to give you more room to work with inside, and it retails for $110, so excited to try this one out. For the memory, I've got this Patriot Viper Steel Performance Memory Kit, which is DDR4's uh, 3600 speed, which is the speed that you should be going for if you're uh, looking at a Ryzen third gen setup. I was looking for a 3600 speed kit that you could actually buy for 100 bucks or less, and this one fit the bill. Looks pretty decent too, I think. Doesn't have RGB lighting or anything like that, but I was somewhat curious about the timings on this. It is cast latency 17 according to the rating on this. They said you can sometimes get it to CL15, so I'll try that out when I do the follow-up testing video. But CL17 is a few ticks faster than the CL19 or CL20 stuff. Of course, you can spend a few more bucks and try to find some CL15 or CL14 rated memory. But for now, this is what we're gonna go with. I'll let you know how it works. And this is a two by eight gig kit, by the way, for 16 gigs total. Here's the B450i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi motherboard from Gigabyte. Uh, it's a nice board, I've used it before, it's B450. I will need to update the BIOS on this one in order to work with the Ryzen 3000 CPUs. And yes, this is the motherboard that I mounted to wood somewhat recently. <laughs> The graphics card, of course, is the RTX 2080 Super. Gonna be using the Founders Edition, but uh, if I can fit this Zotac Amp Edition in, I will. Again, it's a little bit taller and a little bit longer than the Founders Edition. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of com competition for NVIDIA at this price point if you're looking anywhere above $500, or especially if you're looking above $700. But that said, you do get more performance now with the Super versions of these cards than you did with the former versions. So at least NVIDIA did give us a bit more performance uh, for this sort of refresh of this RTX series. 
batteries. I've just realized that the M.2 NVMe SSD that I wanted to use uh, is currently in use in a different system, so I'm going to be popping in a 960 Pro here. What I recommend for a build like this is probably a one terabyte NVMe SSD, and you can get the Crucial P1 for around $110, which is a really nice deal. It's not going to be as fast as when it comes to read and write speeds as something like a 960 Pro, but it will cost significantly less. But I do need an SSD just to get up and running with this build, so I'm going to pop this one in for now. Finally, our power supply is a Corsair SF series power supply. In the parts list in the description, I recommend the 600 watt version of this. I just happen to have a 750 watt version of this, so that's what I'm going to use. They're physically the same size and they look the same and everything, and they have real nice cabling too, which I think is going to be uh, pretty important for this build because a lot of that is going to be very visible through the side panel window of the T150. That said, those are all the parts we're working with for now. Let's get started. So here's the first look at the TU-150. Uh, handle is up on top, very sturdy. Uh, this is brushed aluminum, which is uh, the construction for the top and the front, and I believe it's got a steel frame inside. Handle feels very sturdy, pops up, you can carry the case around, uh, pops back down. So there's the handle functionality. Beyond that, front panel up here, we've got a power button, we've got that USB type C, that's a 3.1 Gen 2 connector. You do need a, an ITX motherboard that has that plug on it in order to use this though, which you might have a harder time finding. That's part of the reason why I'm holding out for the Crosshair 8 Impact is because it does have the plug for that. Beyond that, you got a couple USB 3.0 ports, mic and headphone jack and a reset button. Side panels for this case are just held on by little ground uh, so they basically just pop off like this and you've got these little catch points that pop in there I think it's a good method pretty easy to remove and it stays on there pretty solid when it is on uh, This is tempered glass and then there is a metal piece right here That's just providing a little bit of a modesty panel I suppose for where your power supply is going to go because your power supply goes in up at the top right there Now you might notice that this case only has a couple hundred and twenty millimeter default fan mounts And it does not ship with fans. So that's one of the things I wasn't positive about I am going to need to add a couple fans to this system which might potentially increase your cost by 20 or 30 bucks depending on the fans that you go with. You might note back here there's a power plug and that's a pass through for where the power supply mount actually is internally. Here's the rear side panel, also aluminum, so that's a nice bit of a ventilation intake there for your power supply. And then here we have the power supply pass through, uh, all of your front panel connectors, and you can see kind of where the grommet plugs uh, line up there. And they actually did give an additional little grommet holder in the accessories for that. So if one of these breaks, you can pop that back in there to get it functional again. Back here there's a a hard drive mount uh, for 3.5 inch drives and you can also I believe do a 2.5 inch drive mount there as well. The front panel up here pops off in the standard method, just grasp and tug. There you can see it's uh, again more of that aluminum. There is some intakes here along the sides that would provide a little bit of dust filtration since these are pretty small holes in there. Uh, and then at the bottom it's just completely open. So airflow may or may not be a concern in this case. Uh, maybe I'll do some thermal testing once I get the system all put together. But you do also have a couple 120 millimeter fan mounts at the bottom, uh, potentially some radiator support there as well. This would depend on what other hardware you have installed because you may or may not be dealing with a conflict with the bottom side of the motherboard or if you have a graphics card installed there for example especially if it's a thicker graphics card but there on the bottom you can also see uh, feet with a bit of rubber and that's uh, pretty much it for the quick overview of this case does this top piece pop off too oh it does hey look at that that's convenient and I guess that does give you a little bit of a look at that handle uh, which I will say is very well done because again, it's got that pop up and pop down and then it's very securely mounted to the steel frame inside the chassis. So uh, well done there as well, Lian Lee. Oh, and also uh, you got some additional drive mounts here at the top. You can see these little grommet holes for 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drive mounts because you can pop a 3.5 inch drive at the very top of the case right there. So there's where a 3.5 inch drive could mount to the top of the case potentially. And then just to clarify, since I don't think I was correct earlier, this mount back here is actually for a 2.5 inch drive and they come with a bunch of uh, little grommet holes for mounting drives onto that, as well as those little uh, screw extensions. Lastly, here's your front intake, and here's where, again, uh, I have a little bit of concerns about airflow because this is completely blocked off in the front here, except for this intake, uh, which I guess would help direct airflow through this dust filter. It does have a dust filter for that front 120 millimeter fan mount.
As mentioned when we went over the case, uh, there it doesn't ship with fans. So pick your poison when it comes to fans. I'm going to install a couple of these BR Digital fans because Liam Lee sent them over and they're here. Matches with the case, so let's go ahead and do that. This is actually a three pack of fans. It comes with, wow, a lot of accessories like rubber dampening pads. It's actually got a PWM signal splitter there. That's, that's pretty convenient actually. And then the fans themselves, three of them. I'm just gonna be installing two though. So just to quickly bring you guys up to speed on what I'm doing, integrating RGB into a build is always something that adds potentially more complexity. And like it or not, that is what I've done with this build. So uh, fortunately, everything that I need is included in this little uh, three fan kit, the BR Digital Lee Lee fans. Uh, however, it is making a little bit more complex. These do not have your standard four pin plugs to plug directly into the motherboard. They have uh, these little seemingly more proprietary plugs, which you need to plug into this little controller here. The controller comes with a, a splitter here though, so I'm just going to connect that up there and that will allow me to plug in uh, two fans, I guess, for the RGB side of it. The fans themselves, in case you're wondering, uh, do have one plug, just a standard case fan plug for PWM signal control, and then this secondary plug here, and that is for the RGB LEDs. So you can plug the fans in and get them to work without connecting up the RGB, but since we're all about that RGB life here, we're plugging that in too. Uh, and yes, it does come with a little controller for controlling the RGB if you don't have the capability to plug it into your motherboard and control it that way. So this is the method that I have chosen just to get these fans to light up. But what I discovered as I was going through this is that since these are addressable RGB LED fans, you actually do have a five volt three pin standard motherboard connector right here that it ships with. So uh, I could plug that into the motherboard and then that splits off into three RGB controllable plugs for each fan. Uh, so you pick your poison, go either way. For now, I'm just gonna use this controller though, because since I've already got it wired up. So at this point, the build is uh, pretty much assembled. I have a few questions about a few things. There was a bit of sag on the graphics card that is actually being held up down on this end by a USB Wi-Fi adapter, which I just kind of wedged in there temporarily to get rid of some of that sag, so that's okay. Beyond that, small case, not a ton of room or a ton of capability of routing cables behind a motherboard tray or anything like that, especially since the business end of our power supply is on this side. But that is why they put that sort of modesty panel there on the tempered glass. So I've just been trying to sort of cinch up the cables where necessary to make sure things are somewhat presentable. Uh, but now I think we are ready to sort of reassemble this thing when it comes to the top panel here and the side panels. All right, power supply is plugged in and now the moment of truth. That's better. And so here we are at the end of the build process uh, with some, some stuff to talk about. The first thing I'll point out right now is that uh, I did not do what I said I was gonna do, have not updated the UEFI BIOS on this motherboard, therefore the CPU is not being recognized and all the fans are spinning at full speed on the graphics card as well as the front and rear fan as well as the CPU fan. So you might be hearing it right now. That's fixable, that's updatable, don't worry about it. Beyond that, everything's plugged in and working functionally fine, so uh, I'm gonna say this build is successful for now. Stay tuned though, because I do have a follow-up coming really soon where I will be swapping in, hopefully, that uh, Crosshair 8 Impact motherboard, doing some testing on the system to tell you guys how it actually performs, because I will say, when it comes to the power that's in this thing, like, that's a, that's a pretty portable system there. Uh, for the amount of power you can fit in there, given that I have an eight core in it right now uh, with the potential to add a 12 core or even in the future, like a 16 core. That'd be pretty sweet. For now though, let us finish off this build video with the requisite peeling of the plastic on the temper glass and then a bit of sexy B-roll, I think. So guys, let me know in the comment section what you think of my build I put together here. I think it's pretty beastly. Of course, uh, there's still a few tweaks to be done to it to get it uh, completely functional and everything. Stay tuned for that follow-up video where I will do some testing as well as hopefully trying out the uh, Asus Maximus 8 Impact motherboard. Uh, hit the thumbs up button on your way out too. If you enjoyed this video, we'll see you guys next time.